Welcome to the tour. Stops on today's ride include an exclusive story from on the ground at the tragic avalanche that occurred on Boulder Mountain near Revelstoke, British Columbia. The cameras get into the driver's seat of a groomer and find out the secrets of keeping the trail smooth. In the testing category, the new Polaris Rush 800 gets sampled by the team. And a private chat with Yamaha divulges some interesting comments. It's all good, so let's ride. STV is sponsored by G-Max Helmets. There's a G-Max for everyone. By Ultimax Snowmobile Belts. Make it a round trip. And by ski -Doo. Better rides, better riders. The following story may be disturbing for some as the events involved were tragic. We believe it is a story that needs to be told to properly honor those involved. started out as it has every year since they've been holding it. The Big Iron Shootout at Turbo Hill near Revelstoke in British Columbia has always been a thrill weekend drawing big motors, big machines and lots of keen enthusiasts out to watch the boys challenge the vertical climb. I'd go too far and then lose and then Stink! <laughs> that just kind of ticked off. It took that ball. Oh, it's good. Lots, lots to see. Uh, it's good to see all these new skidoos out here. And uh, 1200s and the uh, Yamahas are always working good as usual. And uh, it's just a fun time. Uh oh, there's a guy. You're going to get this one. Oh, 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 oh. As always, some make it to the top with great skill and losing the battle with gravity, some do not. Just when great fun was in high gear, things went wrong, very wrong. A slide was triggered and tragedy struck as millions of tons of snow slid into the hundreds of onlookers standing defenseless at the bottom of the hill. I'd say there's probably 300 people in that path. At least 300 people. A wall of snow, man. Let go from the bottom of the rock. Came right down. Some spots it's, uh, it's got to be 12, 15 feet deep. Uh, estimates there's pretty anywhere from 50 to 100 snowmobiles buried right now. At this point, I believe from the information I've had since I got here right after the avalanche, there are at least five people and probably more people are still unaccounted for in the debris field. Myself and a few other the locals and, uh, and veteran snowmobiles tried to uh, get the site organized with a search party, with our beacons, with our probes. We did, we feel, pretty thorough search, initial search. Um, there were several hundred people here, so the site management was very difficult today trying to get the, the uh, trackers on the right settings. Uh, we did a pretty good job. Uh, we had some professional people to help us here and uh, we did an initial search and we, we think we, we had some signals but it, it's, the depth is up to 20 meters deep in places. It's, it's horrendously deep. The avalanche was a nasty part of Mother Nature dealing with unstable snowpack and sadly two members of the snowmobile community were lost and many others injured. Events like this are tragic and always get widespread news coverage. Sadly, the mainstream news only dealt with the negative and labeled all snowmobilers as reckless renegades. The question of whether or not these riders should have been there is definitely one that needs to be considered, but only to help prevent future incidents, not to add sensationalism onto a situation where people lost family and friends. What was not really covered, and a major part of this story, was how well the snowmobilers who escaped the slide reacted on the scene. Our snowmobiler TV cameraman arrived just as the avalanche finished and immediately joined the hundreds of people who got busy, organized with probes and shovels to find and dig out the dozens of buried people caught under the snow. It was these efforts by skilled and trained snowmobilers that saved many from certain peril. 
Everybody worked their guts out trying to get their brother, their cousin, their friend out, and we were just there to help. We got there later on and just uh, helped as much as we could and, and did get them out. But again, it was like 12 to 14 feet deep, and uh, you know everybody worked hard, and it was it was not the best place to be. Well, basically, at this point, some of the media and some of the, the uh, eyewitness reports talk of a bit of a bit of shock and confusion, and there's no doubt there was. I mean, it's a pretty traumatic experience to see, you know, 50 or 100 people get swept away by a fairly big avalanche. Um, but certainly, um, there was a, a, a lot of action, organization being being shown by by the riders themselves. Um, certainly, a good majority of them uh, had already opened up their safety packs. People were assembling their their three meter and four meter probes, um, a lot of shovels out, and of course the biggest thing was transceivers were out and people were trying to make sure that they'd switch to search mode. In other words, getting ready to look for uh, other signals under the snow, which thank God uh, turned out to be not that many. And one of the misconceptions about this whole incident, I think, is the fact that it's perceived that there are a lot of people here that, you know, were from out of the country or you know pulled up in their vehicles a couple of kilometers away or it, it attended an event that had easy access and really 90 percent plus people here um, were avid snowmobilers uh, were knowledgeable snowmobilers and 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 had experience in this particular valley so they knew that that you know we're in backcountry training and we were prepared to be in it and people had some training people had some knowledge to to, to know what to do when when, when the tragedy hit Stay tuned, we've got more on the rescue coming up after the break. Coming up, more on the rescues. 